success in IELTS webinar. I'm Seville and I'm your IELTS trainer today. This is going to be our very first listening and speaking webinar and we are all very excited. We hope you find it very useful. So uh, today's session is exclusively about IELTS listening and speaking and we're going to cover top tips and very useful information about these two tests. So let's get started, shall we? Next slide, please. Well, on this slide, um, well, we have some brief information, as you might already know, IELTS is the international English language testing system, and it's jointly owned, owned by the British Council and two other institutions. Uh, next slide, as far as I know, is about the test format exactly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on this slide, I want to talk about the IELTS test format very briefly. The listening test is the same regardless of whether you are taking the academic module or the general training module. The speaking test is also in the same format. However, that doesn't mean that every single question will be the same. We are going to cover these tests, speaking and listening in detail on tonight's show. The reading and writing tests on each module are slightly different. We're going to cover these tests in another session. And let's not forget to mention the timing of the test. The IELTS test takes two hours, 44 minutes plus 10 minutes transfer time in the listening test. And that's all about that. And another general uh, slide here. Uh, IELTS results range from band scores of 90 zero. The IELTS 9 band system is used to measure and report scores in a consistent manner. Examiners are trained in line with globally accepted standards to ensure consistency and equality of their assessment. We will not focus too much on the band scores today, but, but, but if you would like to get more information, you can find the public versions of band descriptors on takeielts.britishcouncil.org. So that's all about the general slides. Now we will start talking about the two tests, listening and speaking individually. And we'll start with the listening test, if you're all ready, are you? It would be very nice to see some responses. Hey, <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, guys, I'm a very typical teacher. You know, I would like to see my students active and unhappy and motivated and ready, obviously. Great. Thank you very much for your responses. Let's start the listening test. Now, I want to start with the nitty gritty of the listening test. I, the, the listening test is designed to assess your ability to understand spoken English. And the test includes 40 questions spread over four sections in 30 minutes. This is the nitty gritty. These are the details. Um, plus, I said 30 minutes plus 10 minutes transfer time, which will be given at the end of the listening test. You will hear each recording once only. There will not be a second time, I'm afraid, and your answers must be written in pencil only. Let me look at the, the, the uh, slide again. Time. I think I covered everything. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention at the very beginning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to answer all your questions about the IELTS test. And that's why we run these webinars on a monthly basis. And to help you even more, we, we divided the webinars into two. There are sessions on reading and writing, and there will be sessions starting from today uh, exclusively about listening and speaking. So I would like you to ask me questions about the tests I'm talking about. Now, if you have any questions about the listening test, please uh, write them straight away. If it's not about the test I'm talking about, save it for later, please, because I will try to answer them as much as I can on tonight's show. Is that okay? And I hope that is okay. And I would like to go forward. All right. Okay. The slide has already been changed. Thank you very much. Um, now, more information about IELTS. Let's me, let me have a quick look at the items. We got some items on the, on the slide. And actually, let's start with the good news. The answers are in, always in order. So you don't need to go back and forth to find correct answers to your questions. 
The recordings get harder as you progress through the test and variety of task types, I mean question types, are used. I suggest you do your best to familiarize yourselves with different task types before you actually take the test. Please remember, you will have uh, time to read the questions ahead of the recordings. In other words, before the recording starts, it is, uh, it, you will be able to read, see the questions. So S says, listening is easy for me, good to know. And um, I think it's vital to use this given extra time uh, very wisely, very carefully, very efficiently. And I also suggest you listen to the instructions very carefully to understand what number of questions you need to read. You might hear some, uh, let me see, is there a question where we should use two words for X, the noun, etc. It is accepted as mistake if we don't want, if we do not answer exact words. Oh, yes, I will talk about that. Very good question, by the way. Now, I was saying you have some time to read the questions first. And also, I want you to um, listen to the instructions very carefully in order to do well in the listening test. You might hear some instructions like this. You will hear a conversation between a clerk at the inquirer's desk of a transport company and a man who is asking for travel information. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Questions one to five. You need to focus on these questions only. As you are reading these questions, you can underline circle words. Take notes if you wish with your pencil. Pencil, not pen. And you will have around 20 seconds, a minimum 20 seconds, actually. After the recording finishes, you might hear something like this. Um, before you hear the rest of the conversation, now you have some time to look at questions six to 10. Questions six to 10. You need to focus on these questions this time. You will again be given some time around 20 seconds to read the questions. And at the very end of the test, after the fourth recording, you might hear this. This is the end of, of, of section four. You now have half a minute to, to, to check your answers. And imagine the half minute passed. This is the end of the listening test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet. So this is what you will be hearing during the test. Um, now, I will come to this question, don't worry. I know the answer is in my presentation. That's why I will be answering it shortly, just for your information, S. All right, uh, let's move on to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. Uh, here's a list of, uh, of IELTS listening task types. Please have a look at the list. As you look, I'm going to talk, of course. Uh, I suggest you familiarize yourself with these task types before you actually take the test. On today's presentation, we will be practicing some questions, don't worry. We will be pra practicing multiple choice questions and matching and sentence completion, uh, three types. And if you, if, I think you had enough time to look at the question types. Let's move on, please. Right, some essential skills here. As we have covered earlier, you will have time to read the questions ahead of the recordings. And as you read the questions, try to predict as much as you can, please. Uh, let's say, um, is it a number or, or a day, a name, an adjective you are going to catch? Try to predict this. Imagine there is a name and there is a blank next to it. You might probably be uh, asked uh, to listen for spelling, so be ready. Uh, look for currency indicators, then you need to catch a number, and so on. And by the way, there is another thing that I want to warn you about. Beware of distractors. Just because you hear something for the first time, doesn't necessarily mean that it is the correct answer. When you're listening, the speaker might go back and reverse the answer. Be careful. You are probably also wondering about, uh, wondering what the recordings are about. Uh, well, each section uses a different type of recording, ladies and gentlemen. For a start, the topics are different, totally different. For example, one listening may be about sport, um, 
but 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 another will be about something completely different but also uh there might be some monologues uh this is with one person speaking obviously while others are dialogues with two or three even more people having a conversation uh and and um actually let's let's talk about yeah let's talk about the parts individually now i was going to say something but i think then in the next slide if i'm right can i see the next slide please oh yes exactly there you are now i would like to give you some more detailed information about the sections in the listening test we start with section one now Ladies and gentlemen, for section one, you'll normally listen to a conversation between two people on a general, everyday topic. For example, a conversation in, in an accommodation agency and answer questions on your comprehension. Very, very general, very simple. Let's move on to the next one, please. But when you get to section two, although it's still about something general, something about everyday uh, issues and still non-academic um it is you will notice there there is only one speaker this time in section two now uh probably numbers or addresses uh, one of uh, s again says probably numbers or address words or names in the section exactly exactly in section one definitely in section two it's still non-academic it's still general but there will be a monologue uh, you might listen to a speech about local facilities, for instance, or a talk about the arrangements for meals, or, or um, a comp imagine a hotel introducing their services, and so on. Hello, Irina. Good to see you tonight. Uh, section three, please. Next slide. And section three. Right, so we have a question from YouTube. My uh, my colleagues at the at the British Council office are are sending me this message. Alishtan from Azerbaijan. Multiple choice questions are. Uh, can I overcome this? Well, I think so. Uh, many many candidates struggle with the uh, with the multiple choice questions. Uh, I think here the most important um, thing to do is. In the given time that you uh, that you need to read the questions, make sure you re read the multiple choice questions, the choices of the question very carefully, and because you need to be able to uh, you need to be you need to know every single uh, option A B C D in order to choose. To, in order to be able to choose one of those. So I think if there's a multiple choice um, question set with your pencil in your hand, you will be reading uh, very thoroughly, word by word. I think this is the key. And um, I hope that is helpful. In section three, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there is a discussion involving up to four people in an academic situation. You might listen to a, a conversation between a university tutor and a student discussing an assignment or, or a group of students planning a research project and so on. These are the first two things I can think of. I absolutely agree. I think multiple choice is one of the hardest task types. And listening section four, please. Now, finally, in section four, you will need to answer questions while listening to an academic lecture. As a teacher as an, and as an IELTS trainer, I often get asked how difficult the uh, listening test is. Well, to be honest, that varies from person to person. How easy or difficult you find the test overall really depends on you, but uh, and it depends on you and your listening experience and your ability, of course. But I want to emphasize a few things. The listening test is designed to increase in difficulty as the test goes on. So section one is the easiest to complete, but section four is the, the, the most difficult. In sections one to two, as I've 
already said, there is an everyday context, such as an accommodation office or a travel agent or, or a public meeting. So you're mainly listening for main ideas and factual information. In sections three and four, however, you will need to listen for main ideas and facts as well. But, but these audio recordings are in academic situations, such as study meetings between students and lectures. So you will also need to show that you can understand how much speakers agree with each other or, or and, and show that you can follow academic explanations and demonstrate understanding of speakers attitudes and opinions. Uh, so this is the main difference, and I, again, do agree with uh, you that uh, multiple choice questions are not very easy, but you should do your best to read the questions very carefully and use your extra time very wisely. Let's move on, please. All right. Now, um, key tips for IELTS listening. Let's see. Please have a look at the items on the on the slide. Well, I think you should look for keywords and questions when you're given time to read them. Make sure you understand what types of answers are needed and predict as much as you can. I think it's, it's important to remind you um, there are no penalties for incorrect answers. So I suggest you attempt all questions. Technically, an incorrect answer and a blank answer are the same. Well, Akmira, very good question. Now, what we... Uh, want here is consistency. If you want to stick to the British way of spelling, go for it. If you want to stick to the American way of spelling, go for it. But especially in writing, if you spell uh, in the British way in one sentence, in one question, and if you spell otherwise in another question, in another task, then we would think you are making a mistake. We would think that your spelling is inconsistent. Then we might think, I mean, you might lose points, basically. But stick to one way, not the other. All right? Hello, Wilgan. Thanks for writing your name. And um, spelling and capitalization are very important. If you misspell a word, you will lose the question, I'm afraid. If you uh, do not capitalize a word correctly, again, again, you will lose the question. So these are extremely important in the IELTS listening test, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm looking at the um, section again. By the way, I'm at the university today and I've just received some coffee. So I'm going to make a little bit of a noise to get my coffee out of the box. Oh God, lovely. I was really looking forward to this coffee. And hi, how about numbers? Do I put the digits or words? Thank you. Words would, uh, words. Numbers would be fine. And however, you must listen, you must listen. You must um, keep the instructions. If the instruction says words only, then everything must be written on words. So IELTS instructions are very important. You must be very vigilant and careful. What if we don't put like in words midsummer? Does that count as a mistake? Yes, it does. If, uh, for instance, brother-in-law, we spell it, we, we write it as brother-in-law, right? That is the correct way of writing the word. If you if you um, put blanks between these words, that just wouldn't do good. In instruction, it's not clear what could be a mistake for examiners. Some dictionaries do not do not accept dash. Well, you need to stick to the uh, the um, uh, acknowledged the the um, accepted worldly accepted. Um, versions. The same thing, where I, I get a lot of questions about the abbreviations. Abbreviations are tricky, dashes are tricky, I know. But imagine American people write one word, I'll think of one in a minute, one word without the dashes, as long as it is accepted standard English, whether it's British or American, that's fine. But I agree, they are very tricky. So basically, um, 
as long as it is standard English, whether it's American or the British way, it is fine. But uh, do not come up with your own way of dashing words or do not come up with the, uh, your way of, of capitalizing or spelling words. That's what I mean. Or abbreviating words as well. Should we capitalize all words or just some of them like a name of a... Well, Lana, very good question there. Um, you need to be capitalizing names uh, of people of people and their surnames and cities and countries, etc. However, if you want to write everything in capitals in the IELTS exam, that is also accepted. So here's, here you go. Some, some of my students, I remember, they were not very good at spelling and they were, and capitalization, uh, they were so scared and they said, I would like to capitalize everything. And I said, let me give you the good news. You can. Oh, there you are. I think I'm done with this slide. Oh, wow. Now some spelling exercise. And what do we start with? with a multiple choice question. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm an English teacher and an IELTS trainer. I know uh, what you're struggling with. So I prepared this very presentation accordingly. Now, uh, I will be, oh wow. So what happens is, very interesting. My phone is away and in silent mode, but uh, it started ringing on my computer. I'm very sorry for the, for the interruption. And let's see now, let's see now, ladies and gentlemen. Please look at the questions. Now I'm going to use, I'm looking for my notes actually. Let's see. Oh, there we are. Are you ready? So I'm giving you a little more time to read the questions carefully. Here we go. I will start reading a text and I want you to uh, write your answers okay, on a piece of paper and then we'll see how many you got correct. Good morning, everyone. My name is John, pa John Parkins and I'm the restaurant manager. And I understand that none of you had previous experience as kitchen assistants. Well, you might be feeling a bit nervous now, but most of your kitchen, most of our kitchen assistants say they enjoy the work. OK, they might get shouted at sometimes, but it's nothing personal. They're pleased that they have so many different things to do, which means they never get bored. And I'll tell you straight away that if you do well, we might think uh, about moving you up and giving you some more responsibility. All right. Well, you've all shown up on time, which is an excellent start to the day. Now, I'm glad to see none of you have unsuitable footwear. So that's good as well. You need to be careful as the floors can get very wet and slippery. Those of you with long hair have got it well out of the way. But some of you will need to remove your rings and bracelets. Just put them somewhere safe for today and remember to leave them at home tomorrow as it can be a safety hazard. Now it's going to be a busy day for you all today. We don't have any tables for free this evening and only a few for lunch. Unfortunately, uh, we've got our head chef back. He was away on holiday last week, which meant the other chefs had extra work. Now we'll tell you a bit more about the job in a minute, but first, some general regulations. For all of you, whatever your age, there is some, uh, there is some equipment uh, you mustn't use until you, uh, you've been properly trained, like the waste disposable system, for example, for health and safety reasons. Then I think there are two of you who are under 18. That's Emma and Jake, isn't it? Right. So for you two, the meat slicer is out of bounds. And of course, none of you are allowed to use electrical mixer until you've been shown how it works. Wow. That's the end. Now. Let's see what you could do. Um, can you tell me the answers for number one?
I'm, I'm watching you. I'm watching all the answers. Great, 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 great. Number two, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the correct answer is A for number one. Number two, I see a lot of, oh, B, C's. B, C, A. Mm, there's a variety of answers for number two. All right, now, so the manager is concerned about some of the new staffs. Now, let me go back. What did I read? Guys, I read this. Um, those of you with long hair have got it well out of the way, but some of you will need to remove your rings and bracelets. Just put them somewhere safe for today and remember to leave them at home tomorrow as they can be a safety hazard. So it is. Ah, oh, but all were mentioned. Irina, look, I think you're missing something. I'm saying those of you with long hair have got it well out of the way. So it is not a problem. It's well out of the way. But, and there is a but, but some of you, uh, some of you, yeah, some of you'll need to remove your rings and bracelets. Just put them somewhere safe today. So that's Two is A, exactly. Number three, guys, what do you say for number three? Absolutely. Oh, no, three is not B, I'm afraid. The head chef is not absent. He's actually back. I remember, yeah, uh, he was on holiday and the other chefs uh, did some extra hours, extra work because he was away. But now he's back. Yeah, he's not absent now, but he was on holiday. And what about number four? All C's so far. Oh, one B. Now this was, yeah, absolutely, Mina, absolutely. It was tricky because I mentioned the waste disposable, the disposal unit, the electric, electric mixer and the meat slicer as well. <laughs> you want the mess, yes, you did. And it was well tricky, I totally agree. So the correct answer was, now I will read again, I will read again and you, okay, I'll read a bit, a bit more slowly and let me think what you're, what you are thinking now. Uh, where can I start with? Okay. For all of you, whatever your age, there is some equipment you mustn't use until you've been properly trained. Like the waste disposal system, for example, for health and safety reasons. So this is for whatever, you, regardless of the age, no one should use waste disposal system. All right. So then A is gone. Um, for all of you, whatever your age, there is some equipment you mustn't use until you've been properly trained, like the waste disposal system, for example, for health and safety reasons. Then I think I think there are two of you who are under 18. That's Emma and Jake, isn't it? Right. For you two, the meat slicer is out of bounds. So for at meat slicer, two people who are under 18, the meat slicer is not for them. And of course, none of you are allowed to use the electric mixer until you've shown how it works. So the electric mixer and the disposal system, uh, they, uh, everyone needs a proper, uh, special training. But for the electric mixer, no, for the meat slicer, it's the age we're talking about. So four is C. All right. All right, Gamze. Thanks for your support. Uh, next one, please. All right. Now, matching exercises are the second hardest, I think. So I thought putting one here might be a good idea. Now, let's read the question. By the way, since this is the very first listening uh, webinar, I'm a bit excited. In the last question, I should have given you more time and I shouldn't uh, have spoken, but I'm going to do it this time. 
please have some time to look at the questions from one to four. I'm ready to go. Hello everyone. I'm the counselling administ administrator here at St Ives College and I've been asked to talk, come and talk to you about our counselling team and the services that we offer. We have three professional counsellors here at St Ives, Louise Backshaw, Tony Denby and Naomi Flynn. They each hold daily one-on-one -on -one session with students, but which counsellor you see will depend on a number of factors. If you've never used a counsellor before, then you should make an appointment with, appointment with Naima Flynn. Naima specialises in seeing new students and offers a preliminary session where she will talk about, she'll talk to you about what you, what you can expect from counselling, followed by some simple questions about what you would like to discuss. This can be really helpful for students who are feeling a bit worried about the counselling process. Naomi is also the best option for students who can only see a counsellor outside the office hours. She's not in on Mondays but starts early on Wednesday mornings and works late on Thursday evenings. So you can see her before your first class or after your last class on those days. Louise staffs uh, our drop-in centre throughout the day. Uh, if you need to see someone without uh, a prior appointment, then she is the one to visit. Please note that if you use this service, then Louise will either see you herself or, or place you with the next available counsellor. If you want to be sure to see the same counsellor on each visit, then we strongly recommend you to make an appointment ahead of time. You can do this at reception during office hours or by using our online booking form. Tony is our newest addition to the counselling team. He is our only male counsellor and he has an extensive background in stress management and relaxation techniques. We encourage anyone who is trying to deal with anxiety to see him. Tony will introduce you to a full range of techniques to help you cope with this problem such as body awareness, time management, and positive reinforcement. Right, that is the end. I hope you did well. Let's see, shall we? Wow, some answers, answers started flooding in. So, wow, great. 1C2C3A, let me see, let me go up again. 3A4B, well, Ulgan, well done. 1C, 2C, 3A, 4B, exactly. Yes, 1C. Well done, everyone. Well, since some of you have written the full questions, I just, you know, I gave you the full answer. Um, C, C. Well, most of you got it correctly. Well done. <laughs> it's really a Cinderella scale. No, you just need to practice and get used to, to this arena. Yeah, most of you got it correct. Nastia, one C, two A. There is, I th yeah, just two is incorrect. Yeah. If you're unable to see a counselor uh, during normal office hours, no, it was, you said um, two A. A was. Uh, Louise Backshow. No, 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 it wasn't. It was actually uh, Naomi Flynn. I remember reading this. Wait, wait, wait. I'll go back to Naomi. And um, so just to make sure Nastia, Nastia feels better, uh, listen to this again, darling. Um, Naomi is also the best option for students who can see a counsellor outside office hours. She's not in on Mondays, but starts early on Wednesday mornings and works late on Thursday evenings. So you can see her before your first class or after your last class on those, on those days. So that, yeah, exactly. That's why it was Naomi. Great. Next slide, please. 
Now, another tough one, gap fills or completion questions. Let's see how you will cope with this, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is a very heavy text. I might make some mistakes as I'm reading. All right, let's hope for the best. And I want to give you some time to read the question first. I hope you're ready to go. Okay, so we've been looking at how man-made changes in our environment can affect wildlife. Now we'll discuss a particular example. Let's take a look at mercury. Mercury is one of the 120 or so elements that make up all matter, and it has a symbol HG. It's a shiny silvery substance. You may, you may have seen it in old fashioned thermometers, but it's used uh, much for domestic purposes now because it's highly toxic. But the, the problem is that the amount of mercury in the environment is increasing. The main reason for this is the power plants used to, uh, to produce electricity. The main source of energy that most of them use is still coal. But when it's burned, it re when it's burned, it releases mercury into the atmosphere. Some of this gets deposited into lakes and rivers, and if it's ingested by a fish, it's not excreted, it stays in the fish's body and it enters the food chain. So it's been known for some time that birds which eat fish may be affected. But what wasn't known until quite recently is that those that eat insects, insects can also be affected. So a woman called Claire Varian Ramos is doing some research on how this is affecting birds. And rather than looking at how many birds are actually killed by mercury poisoning, she's looking for more subtle sub-effects. And these may be to do with some behavior of the birds or, or with the effect of the mercury on the way their brain on the way their brain works. So whether it leads to problems with memory, for example. And she's particularly focusing on the effects of mercury on bird song. Now, the process of song learning happens at a particular stage in the bird's development. And now you know that, uh, now is that a young bird seems to acquire this skill by listening to the songs produced by his father rather than any other bird around. That is the end. Uh, let's see. Fish behavior father. Insects behavior, your father. Okay, let's start with the first one. Let's start with the first one. That's better. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, I shouldn't have read the whole answers in the last set of questions. Let's go one by one. Uh, I think that works better. This is the first listening um, a webinar. I'm learning with you guys. The first one it's either fish or insects. By the way, some of you are misspelling the, uh, the, the word insect. Now, let me send a message to all of you. In sects. In capitals. Remember, I told you you can write in capitals or insects. So they are both. This is the correct way of spelling and is that the correct answer let me reread the the part related can i find it easily oh yes here you go um so it's been known for some time that birds which eat fish may be affected but what wasn't known until quite recently is that those that eat insects can also be affected so we have People have known that, um, yeah, insects, exactly. People have known uh, that um, birds which eat fish may be affected, but we didn't know that insects that eat, in, insects, no, uh, fish that eat insects 
can also be affected. And number two, ladies and gentlemen, what did you say? Absolutely, behavior is the correct answer. Now, Akmarals spelled behavior without the U, and Asus um, spelled it with U, and they are both correct. B E H A V I O U R or B E H A V I O R. Absolutely. And then number three, I think most of you got this correctly. Yeah, the father. Isn't that interesting? Lovely. Perfect. Well done to all of you. You have passed the test. Tonight's test, I mean, not the IELTS yet. Um, could I read what again? Uh, Asus, could you, uh, the, the, the answer of the last question? Third question, absolutely. What, yeah, I said, I said, I said. Um, now the process of song learning happens at a particular stage in the bird's development. And now you know, now you may not know is, sorry, look, I make mistakes. I'll start again. Now, the process of song learning happens at a particular stage in the bird's development. And what you may know may not know is that a young bird seems to acquire this skill by listening to the songs produced by its father rather than any other bird around. Is that clear now? Despite my not reading very well, <laughs> Oh, great. I'm glad you, you, you heard it this time. Lovely. By the way, I just said a young bird seems to acquire this skill. What does acquire? Oh, now the teacher inside me is awakened. What does acquire mean, everyone? Anyone who knows the meaning of this word, acquire. Wow. I've got an amazing crowd tonight. That not require. Acquire. Great. And acquire. It's a verb to get something, to obtain something. Exactly. He acquired the firm in 2008. I was wearing a newly acquired jacket. I seem to have acquired. Uh, two copies of this book. He has acquired a reputation for being difficult to work with. And what is the noun form of acquire? Answers, please. Oh, this has just become an English lesson. Amazing. Mm. Acquisition, Julia. Wonderful. Ulgan, great. Great spelling and very prompt. Perfect. Thank you, Silim, as well. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Let's move on, please. And you didn't know? That's good. You have learned one word. Could I be any happier? Now, the speaking test, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start, shall we? Again, I'm going to start with the overview, with the basics uh, of, the, of the speaking test. The speaking test takes 11 to 12 minutes and the face-to-face -face nature of the IELTS speaking test is definitely an advantage for our candidates. It is as close to a real life situation as a test can possibly get. Reminder, your speaking will be recorded throughout the test. And this is not only to assess your speaking skills, but also to make sure you get the fairest assessment of your speaking abilities. You will be assessed on four criteria, fluency and coherence, lexical resource, that's a teacher word for vocabulary, grammar and pronunciation. And we'll be talking about uh, these in detail. Let's move on to the next one, please. There's a question. Speaking test also depends on the examiners fulfilling the speeding test rules. Um, well, yeah, but the examiners are trained in, uh, in, you know, 
in line with all global standards. So they will do their best to be equal and fair and your, your assessment will be, will be done with great care. Now, what about the assessment? Ladies and gentlemen, the four criteria as you see on the list. Uh, dear S, <laughs> um, I have worked in many countries and um, I have heard some complaints, I know, uh, and I hope everyone is assessed equally, fairly and in accordance with the rules, obviously. Oh, I'm so sorry for your bad experience. I, I truly am sorry, by the way. And let's talk about these four criteria a bit more in detail. As you look through the uh, slide, you will read my uh, short explanations, fluence and coherence. Well, it stands for speed, flow, order and progression, linking ideas and language to form coherent, connected speech, lexical resource, vocabulary, variety and precision with meaning, uh, which meaning is expressed, express an attitude conveyed and grammatical range and accuracy. This describes both the range of different grammatical structures you can use and how well you can use them. And pronunciation, this describes the ability to be understood, amount of strain <laughs> caused uh, to listener, amount of message, which is unintelligible. And also, yeah, tenses definitely. Um, and may, grammar range and accuracy to be able to use uh, the correct words. Well, body language, Isis, um, if, you, if you are very keen on using your body language, you can, but um, we do not assess you on how well you use your body language, obviously. Um, your, your English should be enough. If you want to support it, reinforce what you say with your body language, it's okay, I think. There are no cultural or linguistic bias in the IELTS exam. You are more than welcome to, to use gest gestures as you speak. The next slide, please. Now, uh, part one of, of uh, IELTS speaking test. Let's have a look. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in part one, questions are quite general and you should be able to find something to say even though you're not interested in a topic. Please be prepared to talk about your family, uh, let's say your house, your hobbies, holidays, and give extended answers rather than one word or short answers. This is very important. And the next one, please. Now, here's a sample part one question. Yeah, you can use gestures, you can use your hands, you can use mimics, but guys, remember, this is a test of English. So your main focus should be your English, your English communication. Yeah, uh, let's set the priorities straight, shall we? And uh, let's talk about your hometown or village. What kind of place it is, is it? What's the most interesting part of your town village? What kind of jobs do you do the people in your town village do? Would you say um, it's a good place to live? And another set of questions. Let's move on to talk about accommodation. Tell me about the kind of accommodation you live in. How long have you lived there? What do you like about living there? What sort of accommodation would you most like to live in? So as you see, they're quite general, broad and basic. Part one is very, fairly simple, I should say. Now, Mina, no, you wouldn't be penalized at all. If your time is up, the, in, the examiner will interrupt and say thank you. That means that is the end. So don't you worry. Um, don't worry about time. Don't worry about interruptions. You focus on your communication and we'll take care of the rest. All right. Next slide, please. So part two. Part two of the speaking test is the individual long term, where you have to speak on, on your own for up to two minutes. This part of the test lasts for between three, three and four minutes. The examiner will give you a card which asks you to talk about a particular topic. 
This will include um, the key topics you should cover in your talk. And you are given one minute to prepare your talk. And also you are given uh, a pencil and paper to, to make short notes if you wish. You then have to talk for one to two minutes on this topic and after which the examiner will ask you one or two questions on the topic. Rounding off questions, we call them mostly. Next slide, please. There will be a sample task too. Describe something you own, which is very important to you. You should say where you got it from, how long you have had it, what you use it for, and explain why it is important to you. You will have to talk about the topic for one to two minutes. You have one minute to think about what you're going to say, and you can make notes to help you if you wish. That is a very typical task two question. Now, let me see. There are some uh, interesting comments. She tore the piece of paper and gave for a minute. Dear S, what is this? Don't tell me this is what you have experienced. I'm appalled. Oh, my God. You, you need to report this, by the way. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. And let's see. Uh, is it counted? No. What you write on your paper is your work. It's your personal work. It is there to help you. You are not uh, graded. You are not, uh, I mean, they don't count at all. And let's see. Let's move on, please. Now, part three of, of IELTS speaking test. Let's see. In part three of the speaking test, the examiner will ask further questions which are connected to the topic discussed in part two. This part of the test is designed to give you the, the opportunity to talk about uh, more abstract issues and ideas. It is a two-way discussion this time, unlike part two. Uh, this is a two-way discussion with the examiner and will last uh, four to five minutes max. Because part two is a discussion, you'll be expected to give more detailed answers than in part one. It's therefore good to have a strategy to help you give long answers. I suggest you do your best to answer the examiner's question fully and give some reasons why, provide examples, uh, maybe offer an alternative opinion if you can. These would be my, my smartest, my wisest uh, suggestions. Let's read the sample question on the next slide. No, Lana, of course not. Actually, that question uh, has already come up. Um, if you... You don't need to worry about uh, the time. Talking too much, I think what you mean by talking too much is if I go over time, and don't worry, we'll be taking care of time. Uh, if your time is up, the examiner will politely interrupt, interrupt you, and that means, I mean, you shouldn't worry about this interruption. That means everything is fine. Your time is up. Uh, she or he might be uh, wanting to ask you another question or oh, that is the end of that section, that part. So that's perfectly fine. Now, let's look at, the, um, at this question. What skills and abilities do people most want to have today and why? Which skills should children learn at school? Are there any skills which they should learn at home and what are they? What skills do you think will be important in the future? Why? So here are the questions. Now, having seen three sample questions, ladies and gentlemen, you might agree with me. IELTS speaking questions do not require much preparation, prior knowledge, or too many strategies. Um, you might need some, but not too many, really. Let me read you something. This is from... Um, Ben Descriptor, speaking Ben Descriptor, Ben 7, for fluency and coherence. Are you with me? 
band to reach band seven uh, for fluency and coherence. It says, Can the candidate speaks at length without noticeable effort or loss of coherence and may demonstrate language related hesitation at times or some repetition and or self correction. So it's, it says, it is okay to make mistakes and it is okay to correct yourself. People make mistakes while speaking in their native language. This is, this is acceptable. All you need to do is to relax and focus on your communication. Speak clearly and elaborate your answers. These are the most important things. Rather than that, relax. Uh, next slide, please. All right, now, do's and don'ts. I think we have covered most of the um, items here, but I don't mind uh, going through again. Do try to relax. The examiner will give you plenty of opportunity to speak. And just try to do, your, try to do your best to speak clearly, concentrate on your communication. And be prepared to talk about yourself, your family, life experiences on variety of issues. Give opinions on topics relevant to you and your background and answer the questions as fully as you can avoiding um avoiding uh, short answers or one word answers like yes no maybe now can we take extra one to two seconds to rethink during the discussion well yes but you can gain time by saying well let me let me rephrase what I've just said. I'm not quite happy with that. Or you can say, mm, let me think about this. I have never considered this. And so on. YouTube question, where to find partner for practice speaking? Well, the thing is, um, I think um, listening to a wide range of materials and then uh, of course, finding a partner, finding someone to speak to is the ideal one. But I'm saying, if you can't, you can listen to a wide, a wide range of things and then you can uh, start expressing yourself, uh, giving your opinions on these issues and record your own voice. And it always works. I mean, um, when you are speaking, you can you can apply the the um, pronunciation features you have learned and words that you have recently learned and practice them and and see how they sound, see how fluent you are, see how you use them accurately, see whether you can use them accurately. Is it? Oh, wow. Yulia, very good question. Is it fine to ask the examiner to repeat the question? Well, it should be somewhere in my presentation. Didn't I uh, put it somewhere? Um, look, very, very good question. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very important. And Yulia, again, thank you for bringing that up. Imagine the worst case scenario happened and you did not get the question. What should you do? In part one, part two, and part three, in each section, you can ask the examiner to paraphrase the question. You can. Uh, your examiner can either repeat, or if you want uh, him, her to, to rephrase it, to paraphrase it, I'm sorry, to paraphrase it again, uh, they are allowed to do so, and you can ask for this. Now, Maxime, if you don't understand the question clearly, ay, 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 that is a big problem. <laughs> you, you, you should be able to understand the question. And remember what I said, I ask questions. Look, look at the examples. Um, I mean, as, as, as you have seen the examples, they they don't use many or not many sophisticated or greatly academic words are used. No, questions are quite simple in the IELTS exam. IELTS speaking exam, I should have, I should have uh, stated clearly. Next slide, please.
Thank you very much. And the dome, sir. All right. Let's have a look at this. Now, there are a few things that I want to mention, uh, mention here. I had some notes, I think, but I'm not sure. Are they here? Sorry, guys. Oh, yes, there, here they are. Of course, I have them. Uh, there were a few things that I, I especially wrote down, and I think we should um, we should uh, cover the, uh, these tonight. All right, where? Oh, right there. So, um, speaking from first of all, speaking from experience, please do not. Oh, this is the first one on top of my list. Um, Please do not try to memorize large portions of speech to repeat during the test. This undoubtedly adds unnecessary, unnecessary stress and sounds unnatural. We do not recommend this approach at all. And second one, second one on my list, do not try to speak faster in order to sound more fluent. It doesn't work. It will actually result in blocking your communication with your examiner, which won't sound natural either. And then... Um, and then what's on the on the slide? Don't worry about making occasional mistakes. We've already covered this. Don't worry about occasional hesitations, for sure. And don't worry if the examiner interrupts. They're just trying to uh, trying to put you on track. Uh, and don't forget, English is the only language you need to communicate in throughout the IELTS test. I always say, don't use your first language unless it's English. Oh, yes, Feruza, your accent does not matter. As long as you pronounce words clearly, you should be fine. Oh, yes, Ulgan, there are, actually, there's a group of great um, uh, applications. I totally agree, especially for listening and speaking by the British Council, and they're quite good. And let's move on to the next slide, please. Well, the IELTS preparation materials. As I said, I'm an English teacher and an IELTS trainer, and I know how important study materials are for my students. So here's a list. Number one, uh, road to IELTS e-learning. Once you register your IELTS exam through the British Council, you will have free access to around 30 hours of preparation materials. I think you should benefit from this. And here's a list of, of some other websites, britishcouncil.org take IELTS and learnenglish.britishcouncil.org. And the, uh, when you, I'm sure you have, most of you guys have smartphones. When you type British Council to your application store, you will see a number of free applications. IELTS Word Power is, uh, is dedicated to IELTS specifically. But then there are other applications that I use, even in my lessons, especially these one, these two, audio and video and learn English grade videos. They are very, very good. In grade videos, um, actually, they are IELTS like listenings and uh, but not in the listening form, but you, you just watch them as videos.